Welcome into the CHGO Bears podcast and a special early edition on this Thursday of the basketball extravaganza all starting up today. And we are live at Circa Sports in Waukegan. We're going to be here for a while today. Uh, we are starting our show early this morning because we're going to have a basketball show coming up next. And then we're going to hang out for a long time watching basketball. Sounds like a great plan. Sounds like Sounds a great awesome. day. I'm never leaving. Yep. I love this place. This is the greatest place I've ever been to. I didn't realize this place existed, even though I was told about it. This, this is awesome. I, I know what everybody's thinking. They're wondering how Nick and I got here from Los Angeles. We took his private jet that Gary Ross. Yes, that jet is real. It's a real jet. It, <laughs> we actually took it. And uh, we're back here in Waukegan now. The weather didn't follow us, though, which is unfortunate. No, that, but uh, it's always good being back in my hometown here to do a live show. So this is going to be fun. If we uh, still have a lot to sort of recap and tie some bows on from yesterday's pro day in LA with Caleb Williams. Um, we got some other things we want to get to. There's some more information that's also been reported by others from the, from the last couple days in LA that we will discuss as well. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Please hit that like button for us. Uh, especially if you enjoyed all our coverage from the pro day yesterday. Thank you to everybody involved back here in Chicago as well. You guys did a phenomenal job. Phenomenal. It's killed right. it. Killed the game. It was okay. You know, <laughs> I, I thought you guys, you know, were pretty good, and I was impressed. But I'm not going to do what he just did because that that's just too much love for too me. Too much back just, You're a me guy, and you're just you weren't you were upset. You weren't there. I mean, I thought I would have done better, but you know, you yeah. guys did a pretty good job. <laughs> Mark wanted to be in the hostel. That that well, was I mean, I did. This much can be. He would have been more comfortable than you. This were. much yeah. can be confirmed. Like if if me and Mark had been there when. Caleb Williams is walking down the sidewalk, you know, where the bushes are. I would have been jumping out the bushes and potentially tackling our future quarterback. And in jail. And in jail. <laughs> it's Which worth it, though. It's worth yeah. it. Yeah. That Anything believe- for the content. Caleb, I'm Greg Braggs. I want to be your best friend. I'm so I'm enamored with you. Thank you so much for falling into our laps and potentially making well, our Bears lives so much better. I don't know how much you guys felt it, you know, being there and just, you know, having to go, you know, just pumping out all the work you guys were doing, but like at home, like talking to Bears fans, it felt like an off season Super Bowl. Like unlike anything, I mean, I know every off season is for Bears fans. We overhype everything, but I've never seen a spectacle of a pro day for Bears fans ever in in my memory. But this is, you know, I was thinking about this last night as we were flying back. That the whole vibe of yesterday and all those good vibes that you could feel. I mean, I think people I I could feel it from Chicago, even though I was in L.A., you know, just over social media. You could feel it, you know, seeing you could even just feel the vibes from the actual Bears employees. The amount of fans that bought the NFL Plus subscription just to watch (laughs) 30 minutes of 50 throws. I'm sure it was a great day for the NFL Plus uh, (laughs) folks out there, Uh, you, you know. My, but I couldn't help but think, what would this have been like if Justin Fields was still on the roster today? A hundred percent. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. Every throw would have been like scrutinized. Like, oh, he missed one. I don't the know. Vitriol, Justin, yeah. The vitriol for the coverage would have been a totally different tenor. hundred yeah, percent. Oh, they would have been mad at us because this guy's not even the Bears quarterback. How could you cover this? Why would you go out there like it, that? So it, it, it thank just, you, Ryan Poles. Yeah, no, it speaks <laughs> to what we talked about earlier in the week of the timing of the trade and getting that out of the way, even if they, you know, ended up taking a little bit less than they would have gotten if they had held on to him to the draft. Just I think yesterday reinforced and maybe you can make an argument that none of that matters. I don't know. But I felt like there was sort of a weight lifted off the pro day. There was an awkwardness lifted off the pro day. And instead, it was like this this celebration and I'm even sensing, guys. I don't know if you feel the same way. I I feel like this has been a this has sort of been a fun week because I feel like a lot of Bears fans are catching up to the excitement of Caleb Williams. No doubt, because that was the one thing that was frustrating during all that. 
the whole saga was, look, you want to defend Justin Fields? You want to support him? I totally understand it. I think he's a starting quarterback in the NFL. Like We were on board with all that. But it was the Caleb bashing that never made sense to me because there's just no denying his talent. And so now that that trade has been made and yesterday could just be focused on Caleb, I think those Bears fans that have sort of been on the fence or reluctant to really dive into Caleb or maybe like putting zero, I'm putting zero blame on them. Not, I, a lot of people don't watch college football. A lot of people just just haven't yeah. seen him play that much. And, and that's okay. That's why we're here to try to tell you about who he is as a player. And then you got to see that yesterday in person, even if it was a pro day and you could sort of feel that excitement start to build. Well, think about the last from today, a week goes by from the Keenan Allen trade, which was last Thursday, correct? Last and Thursday, then they yeah. trade Justin Fields on Saturday. That feels like three weeks. That ago. feels that like way. three weeks ago, but it's only been a week. <laughs> so you go from trading for Keenan Allen, still having the the infighting of uh, Bears fans with Fields versus Caleb, trading Fields. Now you start to you know have this healing process. Keenan Allen shows up at Caleb Williams Pro Day, and they're dapping it up. And now this is a point, like you said, where I think just think Bears fans have reached finally that we can be excited about the future and having a clear vision of what's to come. Hit up the chat if you're agreeing with Hogue in that you were in the Justin corner, didn't even want to open up your eyes to what Caleb wants and who Caleb is, and now you're feeling different a week later, a couple of days later. I'm, I'm curious if the, for the people that were in the corner that, that Hogue is talking Let's about, if you actually have come out of it, which, by the way, it's completely okay if you have it. You are allowed to still be in your feelings. By the way, it's also... To be, to be here at the American Place Casino in Waukegan with Circa on NCAA Tournament Day is amazing. Throw in the fact that Nick's dad is here. I mean, we got go, par- parental support. It's dad. A big, big, yeah. day, big day. Big Do you day. know that's the second time I've seen Papa Mose in the last nine hours? I did not know that. Oh, when you oh, come back, yeah. back home. Wow, that's okay. a quick turnaround. Like, you guys have to be here. That's elite dad support right there. <laughs> hey, dad, can you fly me home from here, please? So I don't have to drive home. My dad's nodding yes. So quick, got a quick flight a over DF, to Gary. A DF, designated flyer. I don't <laughs> need a designated driver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that could work. What You're time just, did you wake up to get here this morning? Uh, five forty-five. <clears throat> oh, it's not as bad as I thought. No, okay. easy traffic early in the morning. Yes, yeah. good early crew here. The eight o'clock arriving crew. It was, it was it was very nice. Escorted in, really first class. You it, you uh, I know you had some observations from Caleb's interview with with uh, Colin Coward that you wanted to get to. Yeah, so for me, the Caleb part, like, okay, I've watched the tape. The dude clearly is supremely talented but we've just kept on hearing about the personality and the locker room and i'm trying to figure out is this guy aloof is he really going to connect with his teammates and all this is there's been a lot of positivity around that 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 his guys love him but i you know as being myself just kind of watching each thing that comes out as i like to overanalyze press conferences and interviews oh yeah you do i i do it's you know I, I, I love really should be something like yesterday you were trying to make a big deal about him trying to improve as a leader. This should be something you should be improving. Be, well, stop doing this. That, no, I'm gonna be me. I'm not gonna stop, and okay. I will. Lack, I, lack of growth. I, I don't think it's a lack of growth. I think it's uh I I like to study human beings and who they are and try to get my sense. And I think I'm actually pretty good at it. Thank you very much. Okay. You're great. But at so it. Yeah. thank you. But so his interview with Cowherd yesterday I thought was phenomenal. Colin tried to kind of pin him down on why he was playing off script last year. I forget his exact question and whether he likes to hold the ball too much. Is it because you hold the ball too much or is it because your offensive line sucked? That's not how he put it, but that's basically what he was getting at. So he was putting him in a really difficult position on how to handle it. And he did not even 1% throw his teammates under the bus. He just ultimately got to like, I, I prefer to throw the football versus run it. And I just thought it was a very skilled way where it, this was a guy that was going to defend himself, but he wasn't going to put others again under, you know, run them over to lift himself up. He protected his teammates, advocated for himself. And the way it just, as far as him handling this media market and the questions that are going to come at him and from everything that Adam Hogue is going to throw at him at Hallis, along with you, Nick, myself and, and, um, 
you know, the other people that cover the team, Brad Biggs and Courtney and, and just, everybody. I don't need to gas- name them. I'll just be gassing them up for the next three right. years. I, I just, it, to me, it was a very <laughs> – if you haven't watched the Coward interview, I, I, it's worth your seven minutes. I thought he did – I thought it was just a very impressive Caleb there. And I thought he was impressive with Steve Weiss yesterday too. He knows how to handle himself, man, I, and I think that's a big part of – coming into this market, which he says he's embracing. He wants to go somewhere where they care a ton, which nobody cares more than what they care here. You can be equal, but you're not going to pass us. So and he, he's he's got it, man. I, yeah, he does. I mean, I think he does with his answers and um, how he handles the questions. I can already see a little bit of friction developing with um, if any of the lack of wanting to talk to the media carries over to Chicago. Um slash uh, ending press conferences like the way he did yesterday, where he just sort of did it on his own and walked away. Um, you know, I'm not holding that against him by any means, but it, it's important. No one wants to hear this part, and that's fine. You you know, who cares? I get it. But, like, when I'm trying to get a question in it, at the end there about when he's visiting the Bears and he takes the Greg Braggs of USC football's question over me <laughs> um, and it's all about recruiting and it's like this total fluff thing and, and whatever, and then he just walks away, like, I'm not going to walk away from that be- feeling great about that situation. Now, I'm not holding that against him at all. You guys know how much I am a fan of Caleb Williams and think he's going to be good. But I'm just saying, like, I'm like, and when that happened, I was like, Wait, he blew off a whole question. Yeah, you were right there, prime, I, I, ready to ask it. I, and then I'm just like the first time that happens with uh, Dan Weeder, Jason Leisure, Hal's all like, okay. We'll we'll see how we'll we'll see how that you know that happened. You know that 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 goes over, and, right. and not just them, just like really anyone. So I think there is going to be sort of a learning curve for him coming to Chicago. And even if you want to blame us for that, that's fine. I'll take it. But the market is the market, uh, and and what it is. And I do think that there's going to be a little bit of. Like you can't just not talk. I mean, this is the NFL, and that goes for anywhere. Like, there's literally rules about how often you have to talk. Well, right, the, the structure of it a little different at a pro day where it's kind of at his leisure to walk up to. Like, was he? Uh, he's not obligated no. to walk up to any of you no, look, guys we, yesterday. We, we went there. Now, I did confirm before I went out there that he was supposed to talk, but there was there there was a chance, like when this whole trip was booked, that we weren't going to hear from him. And, and we knew that going into it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I'm again, I'm not holding that against him. He talked. It, it was not uh, a great setup. That's not his fault. Um, I just, you know, the way the way the thing ended was a little because I don't even know how long he actually talked. That couldn't have been more than six or seven minutes. Yeah, definitely under ten. Um, but I mean, look, he's going down the line, kind of answering questions. Even like the guy before you, he's like, "I'm going to get a question with my guy." So obviously, yeah. that was somebody that he was, right. He didn't. It was the known, Greg Braggs right? of USC football. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So we'll be he, his guy here soon. Yeah. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> I had gummy worm, yeah. like the sour gummy worms. To get we'll him, be but. his huckleberry. Yeah, he yeah. loves me. I, I I know deep down he's been watching this show and he's like, I'm a Karm guy. I'm all in. But I I slightly take back everything I just said because I did not fully realize that he blew off Hogue. And now I'm wondering if this guy is the right quarterback for the Bears. <laughs> and we might have to look at J.J. McCarthy because the Bears are going to go see him on Friday. And then no, 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 no. let's call that. But look on the, on the field real quickly, you guys, something I did notice um, before we move on from this discussion, like while the defensive players were kind of doing their thing and doing their drills. There was Caleb. There was a nice high pointed catch that one of the defense players made. And Caleb was there saying something to him, kind of uplifting his teammates, kind of what Mark was saying earlier. He does that. He cares. And he was showing that throughout the entirety of his pro day. So just kind of speak to the, the character that Caleb Williams has and shows, again, on a very important day yesterday. Man's been wanting to be in this position. He's about to, and I also like how he's slow playing when he's being asked, like, is it a, is it a done, done deal? Well, you know, there's he, he's. He's trying to show some level of humility and respect to the Bears and their decision, which I'm sure 99.999% has been made, if not 100. But I, I, so I like the fact that even though he knows that he's going to be a Bear, he's not outwardly saying it and trying just to respect the process. It's, it's, in, it's showing some good maturity here. Well, we got uh, we got some more that we want to get to on what went down the last uh, few days in L.A. with Caleb Williams. Some good reporting uh, by Brad Biggs to address. And I know Carm went on a deep dive about uh, the Bird Streets Club. I did uh, because that's what Carm does. In the meantime, I want to make sure you know about Prize Picks, the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. The easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers instead of battling thousands of other players. 
including pros and sharks. You pick more than or less than on the two to six player stat projection, and you watch the winnings roll in. Look, football season may be over, but the action on the floor is just heating up. You know this, uh, especially today, whether it's tournament season or the fight for playoff home court. There's no shortage of high stakes basketball moments this time of year. Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. Uh, you can right now win up to a hundred times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn ten dollars into one thousand with NBA, NHL, and college basketball entries today on Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to go to prizepicks.com slash CHGO. You use code CHGO and you'll get a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash CHGO. Use code CHGO. Pick more, pick less. It is that easy. And to my guy, Ray Scarpelli and the great people at Chevy, shout out to them and the best offers of the year during the March Radness sales event. Make your way to Ray Chevrolet on Route 12 in Fox Lake to join in on the savings. It's one of the top Chevy dealers in the Midwest. Not too far from where we are here at the American Place Casino. March Rad. March Radness, baby. You'll be able to shop one of Chicagoland's largest Chevy inventories. Perfect tailgate vehicles await at Ray Chevy during truck month. For a limited time, they're offering 0% financing for 72 months on new Silverados with over 100 available. 125 vehicles, Crystal, under 20000 <laughs> Seriously, can you get pricing that is more affordable? You cannot. And, yes, everyone loves the word free. That's what you get this month at Ray Chevrolet and Fox Lake. Free oil change. All you got to do is mention CHGO when scheduling your oil change. Start off the new year right and schedule it by April 1st. Visit Ray Chevrolet and Fox Lake or RayChevrolet.com. They've been serving the community since 1963. Find new roads. Great. Uh, real quickly, you guys, got to give a shout out to my uncle, Teal Roger over here, who's right next to my dad. We have uh, the whole, whole Moriano family in the, Let's in the house. Go. In the Let's house. go. Let's and go. I, walk and I want to shout out wherever that Packer fan is. Show your show yourself, sir. I don't know where you are. Just yell at I will the find you. Greg, I know you're in this building somewhere. Greg, does it bother you that the team Purdue is going to lose to tomorrow has the same logo as the Green Bay Packers? Woof. Woof. You know, now I hadn't thought about that yet. <laughs> now we're doing it. Now that you mentioned it and what you just said out of your mouth hole, I want to <laughs> flip this table. Thank you very much. Mouth hole. Yeah. <laughs> there, was, there was a moment last night when I got home. It was about 1.03 in the morning where I almost overnighted a Grambling T-shirt. How does that make and then you know what I said? Uh, no, I, I'm I'm not. You, I'm, you said you were going to support my. I know, I know, and I do want Purdue it to. Doesn't win. sound like you do all of a sudden. Well, I also like to do bits on the show mm -hmm. that are entertaining. So it was a tough moment for me because, like, do I support my friend or do I support the yeah, company right, right. I work for? You like, yeah. Listen. You want to do bits? I'm going to kick you in the bits. <laughs> 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 uh, 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 as, as professional and kind and beautiful that Hogue is and that he's rooting for you somewhere in his body and and listen I've got you know best friends who stood up at my wedding who went to Illinois and all of it and Cody's here at yeah, two uh, o'clock tip for uh, Illinois here yeah and you know Jake Flanagan boss man the whole thing Deep Illinois fans, uh, I hope that Purdue loses. I hope that Illinois loses. I hope that Wisconsin loses. I hope y'all lose because that's that's who I am. No, man, unless we're playing each other here in the tournament, you I should want no. some semblance of Big Ten success. I've never been that guy. The I don't Iowa root, women's I, basketball. Team. Yeah, I don't root for Ohio it's State. Terrible Michigan. take by you. I don't root for Ohio. We got a State Brewers fan in the house. How we doing? Thanks well, for Craig Council. We appreciate wow. you. <laughs> wow. Wow. The bad guy. He sits behind the I'm mic. Sorry. I'm sorry. So, I'm sorry. Thank you. Hey, Brewers fan, you've been kicking the Cubs' ass for almost a don't, half a decade. Don't so half sauce decade, them up. Half don't, a decade. We don't know. good cop, bad cop it. Come I, will, on I am going to. I'm good pretty cop, sure we're, cop we're closer to Milwaukee right now than we are. Right <laughs> we are. We are closer. That's so, true. And That's I will true. good cop, bad cop because that dude right there does want to hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so. Brad Biggs had some details in his uh, story from L.A. on uh, what went down the last 
few days. So the Bears got there on Monday. Um, and as I mentioned yesterday, and I think Steve Weiss mentioned on the broadcast too, there was a dinner, which was expected. Um, the detail that Biggs had that I thought was super interesting was that they also invited Caleb Williams' teammates yep. to this dinner to get a better idea of how he interacts with his teammates. Um, this is next level stuff. I would just like to point out the contrast of this compared to like the secret dinner that Ryan Pace had uh, with Mitch. Mitch Trubisky in North Carolina, and everything was so secret. They did like literally didn't want anyone to know that they were in on Mitch. And, yeah, what was like, the name they used to, to for their booking there? They used some kind of name, Jim McMahon. Oh yeah, that's right. And Mitch did it apparently. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like he made the reservation, which is also interesting. So they go to the Bird Streets Club, um, which Carm will tell you about in a second. And, you know, it's, they're not hiding this. Now, they don't have to. They have the number one pick. Let's be honest. There is a, a you know, I'll defend the pace regime a little bit. They had the third pick at that point. They had signed Mike Glennon, so they were trying to be covert about it. I get it. But, you know, in, in this situation, yeah, you know, like these are the things that we're trying to vet with this quarterback. And they invite the teammates. I What did you guys make of that? Because I thought it was a great idea. Um, and it seems like the feedback has been overwhelmingly positive. So we know they invited them, but they came, right? The players, yeah. his teammates. So yeah. that being said, I think that that's a test. Also, it's not like draft day where nobody came to yeah. the guy's well, birthday right. party. So it's a oh, right. So that, that's a test, right? Hey, if you're if Todd you, if Washington you want... and you get invited by the Bears to dinner, are you going to turn that down? I don't think that <laughs> helps his draft yeah. stock. Well, and I'm not saying you would, but at the sure. same time, if if you had sour feelings about a particular teammate, Right? Are you? You know what I mean. You you might yeah. think twice. Well, about Well, and that's it. the thing. There's no sour. There's no sour feelings over Caleb Williams. None. No. Every teammate we talk yeah. to, to a man, loves the guy. So I think that part of it, just to see, hey, who will come on his behalf, and then seeing how they interact, I think that's great. Now let me ask you this. Maybe in particular you, because I feel like you would have the biggest problem with this. I asked Brendan Rice yesterday if you could bring one teammate with you to the NFL. Yeah. Who would it be? And he did not say Caleb Williams. He said Taj Washington and and Marshawn Lloyd, which see I which, he didn't answer the question properly because I said one. You don't get to take two. He right. said Taj first. Well, I can understand the wide receiver room sticking together, but then yeah. when you branch off that yeah. and you go to running well, and his back reasoning and was, and I have the video. We should actually post that at some point today. There's still a bunch of stuff I got to sort through mm -hmm. on my phone. Um, but he, I mean, his reasoning was, I think he's just super close to those guys, and and he. Is still working with Taj, I think. And I, I forget the, everything he said in particular. But I guess that's the other side of it if you want to be really nitpicky. But I think the problem with that type of uh, making a big deal out of that type of answer to that question is like you have to pick one. It's not always going to be your quarterback. And again, to what we were just talking about, no one has ever indicated any problem whatsoever with Caleb Williams. As a teammate or leader on the team. It's the best nitpick you've ever done. He didn't pick him first. He wasn't the first guy. He's out. Yeah. Doesn't like him deep down. Hogue uncovered it. Caleb's a problem. That's the the type of, it, okay. Why did I ask that question? That's the type of question that teams will ask guys. It's a pretty common pre-draft yeah. question. Um, I was just curious. No, I hate this. Also, I had no idea Brandon Rice because I this whole thing with him going down the line, all of a sudden he was standing in front of me and he was like looking at me like, Do you have a question for me? And I was like, uh, uh, you got one teammate yes, you want to bring with you to the NFL? <laughs> <laughs> it was <Boom. laughs> and then he and then he did the same thing. He walked away, thinking on his feet. That was it. Your feet. That, that's such an awkward moment. Good job coming up with something. Uh, so the Birds Club, yeah, Bird Street yeah. Club. Let me let me make sure that I get it right. As 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 Biggs wrote it, a trendy private spot in West Hollywood. So I when I was reading that, I'm like, oh, I got to find out about this Bird Street Club and how do you get in there. Um, you know, you wrote the Bears got to spend time with Williams and see how he fits with his teammates. So this is a private members only club. You can't just show up at the Bird Street Club and get in. Sounds like the Bears did. Yeah. Well, I uh, who's the member? Somebody somebody's got oh. somebody's dialing up the big time connections. Jay-Z wore a white tuxedo when he went there. There's not a lot of picks online. This is an ultra exclusive club. All right. So they're not letting me in. 
They are not letting you in. <laughs> uh, Connor McGregor's been there. There's a photo of him back in April. Did you it's, see their website? You can't even get in on you the website. You can't even get on the website. There's, it's just, it's just this it. BS. Yep, BS. As in Stands B, for anything as, that comes in, out of Braggs' mouth. And don't, <laughs> as in, don't even... <laughs> Don't even think you can find anything out. BS, you're not finding anything on, online. It's located on Sunset Boulevard uh, for you L.A. people. Uh, the a, They write, the, this A-list L.A. haunt has attracted the likes of Kendall Jenner and Bad Bunny, Bad Bunny wow. Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, Haley and Justin Bieber, and do you know this guy, Nick? Do you know uh, Timothy Chalamet? Is yes, he uh, hosted uh, SNL like a month and a half ago. There we go. Chalamet's been there. All I right, so now... Nick is trying to Nick's get trying to away. hack into the website. Nick's making a move here, but so the point is that they they went upper level here. They didn't. They weren't messing around. This is top notch. Just type "let us in." <laughs> let, okay, that's a good idea. Right try, now, try the password that the uh, Utah Jazz had for the NCAA tournament Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jordan pushed off. Yeah, oh, there we go. You see yeah, that card? I did see that. That's hysterical. And and as Michael Jordan told you. Uh, he was already going that way. He just gave him a little bit of nudge. Byron Russell, loser. Um, Utah. Jazz yeah, you people. know that's big loser energy when you're still complaining yeah. about a push. You know that you think you had 30 years ago. Quit crying. Uh, it it is, and it's also funny. Yeah. It is. It's good. It, it, it's Jordan, good. It's well done. played. Yeah, we we're, we're still it's wrong. It's wrong. We're still holding. It's... We're we're holding the follow through here forever because last shot in a, in, a, in a in a Bulls uniform. So, but anyway, the point is that look. Uh, if there was any doubt that the bo- the Bears were rolling out the reddest red carpets for Caleb Williams, they they found the elite, private, ultra exclusive club to hang out with Caleb and his teammates. That's that's that, that's a good job by the Bears. I mean, uh, have you ever been to an ultra exclusive club? I know I haven't. That's- um. No, I've never been to Braggs' house. Yeah, I've yeah. never been to Braggs'. No I've, ne- I've never sack. been to the garage. No yet. cul-de-sac action. Steven's been there. For you. Steven yeah. went to the garage. Cigars, and Cigars yeah. private uh, garage. fold-out chairs. Yeah. Private garage. Garage. Yeah. My, my house kind of like a sports book a little bit, right? It's got the TVs, and it's good. But well, you're not invited, and neither are you, Carm. Wow. But you're invited, Nick. Oh, they keep making fun of the cul-de-sac. You're Listen, invited. I, They're not invited. I'd love, I'd love to come over and chill in your pool. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, that's all you got on the that, Bird Streets. That, that, that's yeah. That's I, well, I, could, I, I listen. I went deep dive, and that was basically all I could find in the in the twelve minutes that I had. That was but good, it, but, but there was good there really wasn't much more. Um, so. I just, you know, not not a not a huge well, revelation here, but but they went big time. Well, and then they continue. Then, according to Biggs, yesterday they spent. So that was Monday night, according to Biggs. Yeah. So then Tuesday they're there all day, and they apparently spent a lot of that day with Caleb, half, putting him through half the day on campus at the football facility, talking ball, doing work on the whiteboard, watching film. It's a big Tuesday. That's. That that I mean, think about that in comparison to the twenty minutes or whatever you get at the combine, right? With oh. the guy, I mean, it's essentially a private a private thirty, right? Yeah. I mean, it's a three day private thirty, yeah. You know, and and, and here, so so here's what we know: uh, Caleb did not want to start doing these thirty visits until he got through the pro day. Okay, he's made that very clear. That was the reason for him pushing back. Uh, and and by the way, I don't even think it's accurate to say pushing back. The Bears invited him to Hallows Hall soon after the combine and his team made the decision you know what the next steps pro day we're going to focus on that first now he does though take time in the 24 hours leading up 24 hours plus leading up to the pro day to spend time with the bears not the commanders not any of these other teams rumored to maybe come up with the bears yesterday nick and i saw this with our own eyes this was the bears show no doubt. It was, you know, Dan Quinn and Cliff Kingsbury. You go hang out over there. The Bears, Losers. the Bears <laughs> show is over here. They're the ones talking to Carl Williams. They're the ones talking to whoever that guy is in the Lakers hat that I still need to figure out who the heck that guy is. Um, that's clearly running things for K- Caleb that was basically hanging out with the Bears contingent for a big portion of the whole thing, right? Like th- this is Keenan Allen's there. Okay. I don't see um Terry McLaurin showing up. Nope, all nope. right. And I know he doesn't live in LA, but the point is, is like, it's obvious where this thing is headed right now, which leads us to our question on the show, our headline, which was, is Caleb Williams 
a lock at this point to be a Chicago Bear. So on the count of three, one, two, three. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's not a question. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put an asterisk. Virtual lock. Virtual lock. Virtual In lock. the same way that Purdue's a lock against Grambling tomorrow. God. You know, it, 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 would take, going. it would take something You're just so unexpected and every... so ridiculous that would never happen, right? The Bears had Excuse nine. <laughs> You're just trying to enrage me. You know, I, you know, it's only because it works. It was, I'm focused. It, I'm locked in today, and you are trying to just set me off. It's fair. It's here. fair what he did. Well, Lee, I'll explain why it's a you, virtual lock, Dick and Son. What? <laughs> that was weird. You know, but we'll get more into that in just a sec. But I first have to tell everybody about Empire. With Empire today, you get shop at home convenience, the right product for your needs, quick and professional installation, and a low price guarantee. Empire today is the best place to get new flooring. So, of course, they're going to have some copycats, but they can't beat Empire in the quality, service, speed. So they advertise these low quality products that they simply won't carry and they won't promise the lowest prices because anyone who does that is putting flooring in your home that wouldn't put their put it in theirs. Liars. And, yeah, exactly. You don't like liars. And they keep shopping for floors simple with a curated product selection. Mm. Empire's philosophies to help you find what you need, not overwhelm you with thousands of choices and substitutes. What they leave out of the selection is as important as what they put in. They also have this virtual floor design which is really cool it's a great way to see how new floors look in any space it's easy just snap a picture and you'll instantly see how new floors will look in your room schedule a free home in estimate today all listeners can receive 350 dollars discount when they use a promo code chgo restriction apply see empire today.com slash chgo for details been in it then in it this All right, where right. Hey, and Brent we were, is supposed to tell you about CHGO. Well, he didn't know that, and he doesn't have a computer in front of him. He's not even following the rundown. It's okay. Hey, we should, are. Why should I follow the rundown? <laughs> I'm just here. Make your own rules. Harass customers of this beautiful, you know, casino. But we can't harass you. No, you can't. It's, I mean, it's a, a very touchy time here. for me right now, okay? You need to settle down. Your I'm team is very good. Down. This is the year. But hey, you did this the sports the center. You, did, you know, I know it is. But you <laughs> did the sports center sound uh, and do shout out, you know, sports center, you know, picking up our, you know, push. So like what? Yeah. No, that was two very, times in the last three days. Very great school. week for ESPN. We're carrying sports center. We're carrying yeah, the content, you know, we're carrying get up. Which, okay. which is why you should become a CHO diehard. Not allowed to have a guest done from the local ESPN radio station. <laughs> 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 Whatever. Yep. Use all our did, highlights. Did, on, did, on Danny, the, did Danny Z approve the, the I, I wonder ESPN if he approved use in our content? There's no control over that, thankfully. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you would like ESPN to survive, uh, please become a CHO <laughs> diehard. Because otherwise, it, it just won't work out for them, obviously. Um, but in all seriousness, great. Uh, just coming out of yesterday's coverage, we had an awesome. Nick did a great job with the uh, diehard overtime. Yep. Um, afterwards, with all our diehards, and then uh, my newsletter came out super early, which was a little bit of bonus because I was writing that during the the diehard OT. So that was out this morning. Actually, it was out last night in right. your inbox. So you can always get that. A lot of things going on for our diehards, and also discounts on merch and events. Right. That's all exclusive to diehards, and you also get. A discount to events, like you said, you get a free shirt right out the gate, and then you get a discount on events, including in 35 days from today, Uncle Moriano. 35 days <laughs> Neil from today, Neil Anderson. Get the ball to Neil Anderson. First night of the NFL draft, we're having a draft party at Joe's on Weed Street, presented by Circa Sports. Let's go, we Let's appreciate those guys, Casa Azul as well. But we're going to be, you know, obviously covering the first round live. Uh, after party with DJ Trey Tunes, and then Friday night we will be doing we'll be running it back at Joe's on Wee Street live show for the second and third round. Gary Fensick will be on hand, presented by the Collectors Cave. Uh, you'll have a chance to get an autograph and a picture with a Super Bowl champion and a legendary Chicago Bear. And then when that show's over, we got Dalton and the Sheriffs for the after party Friday night. So huge two night event at Joe's on Weed Street. In 35 days from today, five weeks. How about it? I thought it was Dalton and Carmen. Dar oh, that right? was the look you were Yeah, Dalton, Carmen, the sheriffs. Yeah. Right. Thank you. 
You're welcome. I need to know. I, how That's many what they're paying for. I mean, when you think about it. Yeah, for sure. That's, so we're excited well, for that. Wait, real quickly again, shout out. My brother just arrived here. So now Let's we, go. I mean, we literally the have whole all, everyone from family. Let's go. Love it. Also. Good job, Nick. Wait till the. Wait you, till, must, you must be a good family, man. Finally, they're bringing the booze over here. <laughs> Let's go. That's, oh, I see the Miller Lite coming. Right. I'll, take a, bottle, Light I'll coming. take a bottle right, of whiskey. 10 o'clock? Let's go. <laughs> at 10 a.m. Relax. <laughs> Wait till you see. Got a designated flyer. I'm good. That's true. That's yeah. true. You That's, are getting that yeah. private jet back to treatment. Wherever, where you, wherever that, you live in Indiana. Where is that goddamn All Packer right. fan? So, look, I do. Th- we all know where this thing is headed. And I'm calling it a virtual lock. I mean, I, I just, you don't make the moves that the Bears have made at this point and right. then not take the best player clearly available in the draft. It's just, it, 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 it would be shocking, unbelievably shocking. And at this point, if you think about, I try to put my head in the headspace of something like that actually happening. After all the, how this has played out, if they were to trade back, could you imagine a moment on draft night where they actually trade back? It would be I'd leave house off. by far the most controversial move. Well, yeah. what'd you call it, and, Carm? And, if he does that, I call it the boldest move of, of bold all. Bold ass polls man. That's what you said. <laughs> if he that was what we were talking about, like the when we were still debating the outside outside chance that they were going to stick with Justin, I'd say if he did that, that'd be the most bold ass polls move in the history of the planet. But it, this would be with a, Justin. This would be even bolder because now you traded Justin. Right. Right. Well, that was the that's the other one. You well, it would go back to your reporting though. Yeah. No. I'm, I'm and I believe it. I mean that. Well, that's already done now. We've already seen this that. Well, Plan B was not Justin. They already moved on from him. right. So and, and they're doing their due diligence on Friday. They're going to Ann Arbor. Right. Well, that's and that's the thing. You still do have to have a Plan B. That's why I'm calling this a virtual lock. I mean, uh, there's abs- the obvious, absolute worst case scenario. There's also things that can just pop up. Like, yeah, I, there's no reason to think there's anything wrong with the medicals. I mean, just even watching Caleb move around yesterday at pro day, like he's clearly in perfect shape. Uh, like, like, like yeah. there, there really shouldn't be any. But if for some reason something did pop up, like that's why you always still have a plan B. I do think they're they're going to be in Ann Arbor tomorrow. Um, actually, today's Notre Dame's pro day, too. So I'm curious who they have at Joe Alt's situation. I haven't mm-hmm. seen that reported yet. Um, but Cole Komet's probably there. They sent nine people, <laughs> nine people. With, I mean, we sent two. The Bears sent four and a half times more. It's pretty impressive. So I, you know, I would hope they'd have more than there than us. We're more important than the Bears. We are the Bears. The Bears need us. They should actually hire us to do no, something. But for real, I mean, there was 32 teams <laughs> represented at, um, you know, USC's yes, pro day. day. But there was probably, you know, a handful of teams where we did have more people from CHGO than teams and teams, representatives. Yeah. Right on time. Thank you, Jason Leisure from the Sun-Times. He's at Notre Dame's pro day. He says the Bears have at least four reps here today, including offensive line coach Chris Morgan. That would make sense. It wasn't I did not see him there at USC. So uh, yeah, no, he was not at USC. But they, you know, there was I, there were other things going on yesterday. Alabama's pro day was going on. Mm-hmm. Ohio State's pro day was going on. Well, Nobody and, was there, and, that, and that's why I mean, all the focus is on the number one pick, and you know, you know, virtual lock. So I mean, the number nine pick is on our scopes as Bears fans, and I just think that whatever pick they make there, whether it's a wide receiver or a left tackle. Or a trade back, like I don't, you can't tell me that any of those routes aren't going to be good in the moment. I mean, six rounds from now, a year from now, it, you know, may or may not work out, but in the moment, it's going to be an upgrade. And you know, the idea that if Joe Alt were to fall to nine, which I don't do not think is a possibility, but if by some way he does, I I think the Bears would have a hard time passing up on a guy like that. You have bookend left tackles and Darnell Wright and Joe Alt for the next four or five years to line up with your rookie quarterback. I, that talk about a healthy environment to develop a guy that you know likes to extend plays and stay in the pocket as long as he possibly can. Look, we're gonna I we still have a month to talk about the number nine pick, and mm-hmm. we are gonna spend a lot of time talking about it. But I, I just it is a fascinating situation because you got a way adding another amazing piece whether that's on the old offensive line or potentially wide receiver for this young quarterback. We've already seen the moves that they've made this offseason. They are trying to create the best situation for this rookie yeah. so that they don't screw it up again. And 
So that's 100% on the table. On the other end of it, it's very possible the first eight picks are all offensive guys, and you might have the best defensive player in the draft, whoever that ends up being, sitting there for you at nine. My, you know, on the surface, to me, we need to weigh offense more than defense because the defense is all already pretty damn good. This is an offensive league. You need to start going all in on the offense at some point, and they seem to be going that way. But in terms of value, you also have to value that. Yep. And if the best defensive play, if you end up with the best, with the number one offensive pick in the draft, and then the number one defensive pick in the draft at nine, it's a good solid. With that, only four picks too, and you get the two best players at the two best. Yeah, you get that's the best a, player on both sides of the ball in the draft, and, and that's what I'm saying. I, I don't see any scenario of whatever they say at number nine, whether it's pass rusher, offensive tackle, wide receiver, or trade back. That n- all of those scenarios good are good for the Bears. I mean, he's really sitting in the bird's nest. There wasn't that. One? Is that the place that was called the sure. bird house? Bird's nest. I'm sure right, that's what it is. No, the, the, rest, restaurant. the restaurant. He doesn't Bird know what I'm street. talking about. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's I really thought, sitting thought, on Bird Street right now. That, that would be in his his Alzheimer's is kicking in right now. Yeah, He's got to relook well, it up. I want to make sure the whole deep re- dive on it. You don't remember. I, I didn't remember the name. The so bird, I love it's the Bird Street Club. Oh, that okay. you're not invited. You to. BS. We'll get in there one day. We'll get in there one. Okay. Let me ask you this: on the spot question. What's your biggest concern about the Bears' offense right now if we're assuming Caleb Williams is on it? It's got to be left tackle um, because I I don't know really? how much. Yes, because I don't know how much whether or not Ryan Poles believes in Braxton Jones. But when I listen to a li- guy like Corey Wooten, you know, when I listen to a guy like Steve Edwards, who we're friendly with, we've had him on a few times. When I talk to people that really understand offensive line play better than I do, like for fans – we're sitting there going, well, Braxton's good, check. But, like, how much does he le- have left on his deal, right? He's got, what, one more year? And then you have to pay him. Left tackles get paid a lot of money. Would you consider Braxton Jones a top 10 left tackle? I I, I don't 10. I don't know the answer to no, that. No, he's not top 10. So you're no. saying no. But do you think that he's going to demand big money if he's a left tackle on the market? Because everybody just thinks, oh, team-friendly deal. Love tackles oh, wait a are. We're, why are we getting so well ahead of ourselves? Because he's only been just, in the league for two years. Because at some point, right? So next year he's got one year left on his deal. So just like the quarterback position, at some point you have to make a decision on whether or not you're going to yeah. pay a guy. And if you have an opportunity to draft one at nine and reset the left tackle clock, that's no different than quarterback or wide receiver. You've got to be thinking two steps ahead for your organization and your personnel. So my question is. My biggest question for the offense is, do they think that Braxton Jones is your left tackle for the future? And if he's not, then you do have to strongly consider taking one at nine. See, I think you're thinking about this a year too far in advance. This is this is the equivalent to where Justin Field was last year. Well, so it's like, okay, we're we're starting about the clock. We're talking about the clock too early when it really should just be about who's the best player. Um, but how many do you more need time- to see more? Do you need well, to see more out of him before you? So but how many more times are you going to have a top 10 pick? Ideally, you're not picking in the top 10 ever again, right? Well, this, is your, this, is mean, your, this is your last. I mean, you yeah, have to. Until Pulse Fleece is the next team. That's okay. true. Okay. I mean, but Pulse. I'm just saying you have to operate that you are that you won't have this opportunity again, because if you do have this opportunity again, it means more than likely you're doing something wrong. Yeah, I would argue, though, that finding left tackles out on the open market, while it doesn't happen a lot, it is, it is uh, easier to do than finding a quarterback out there. Hey, nobody wants yeah. Roma Dunze more than I do. I know we all do as Bears fans, but at the end of the day, I mean, just like last year where people were like, hey, take Jalen Carter. No, he took Darnell Wright. This year, everybody say, take Roma Dunze, take Malik Neighbors. I, he might take a tackle. I, I mean, It's not off the board for me at all. I still look at center as being the one position Thank on you. this team where I'm still a little hesitant about it. I know they bring in Coleman Shelton, and Ryan Bates, whoever wins that. I think Shelton's got the, the lead on him. But the 34 quarterback pressures allowed, man, that was tied for first in the league. And we saw how pivotal, pivotal that the center can be in disrupting a quarterback's process, his comfortability in the pocket. Imagine all the times Justin Fields had pressure up the A gap, whether it was Lucas Patrick, Dan Feeney, you know, Sam Musk for a time, whoever. It, it just wasn't a good situation to be in. So I just still look at that center position, just not knowing if the Bears truly have the guy that they 
are are really comfortable with maybe for 2024 they can get by with it but still i'm looking at center as the, the biggest need for this offense right now and yeah for me it's the interior offensive line i understand that braxton's that elite but i'm still comfortable with him there i'd be surprised if they went left tackle that feels like a luxury at this point as they continue to build it uh and i don't you know you're not going to draft an interior offensive lineman if they stay at nine but maybe if they mm-hmm. drop down get and, and, right trade back then, trade back then jackson powers with, johnson so, something something like that's i suppose is possible and hogue do you do you have information on on the interior line as far as the, what they plan on doing with sheldon versus bates um my indication right now is i believe that as the roster stands right now now they can still draft a center potentially and then mm-hmm. changes it but if you're asking me who do I think is the starting center between Ryan Bates and Coleman Shelton, I think it's Ryan Bates. Oh, okay. I think there he's he's there they he's his contract's higher. There's more money invested in him. Uh, we know about the history going back two years about Ryan Ryan Poles liking Ryan Bates. Um, honestly, I watched some of the tape. I think he's the better player, even though so just even though the Shelton has the reps advantage in terms of the experience. I still think that the moves that they made here, Ryan Bates will be the center. I'd like to go back to my original question that I just asked you guys though, because uh, you all failed. None of you listened to the question. I didn't ask you biggest concern. I, I didn't on ask offense. you what the biggest need was. I didn't ask you about positions. I said, what's your biggest concern about the offense? To me, the answer is unquestionably coaching. We don't know anything about Shane Waldron yet. I was thinking about that. We, so, we, I wasn't going to say that. We don't. We we go through this every two years. It seems like with a new offensive coordinator. Oh, the new guys and everything's going to be better, and then it's not. And I don't mean to put that on Shane Waldron. We don't know it's the truth, and I think he will be an upgrade. But until we see the offense, till we see the scheme, till we see it all put together, uh, it's a major leap of faith that honestly Bears fans should know better that it's all going to work out. And I I'm not trying to be negative about that. I'm just saying we don't. To me, that's my biggest question. Yep. Uh, other like that to me, it's a bigger question than can Braxton Jones be the cornerstone left tackle? I don't know if he can be, but I think he's solid enough to get by. I think they now have enough weapons on offense to get by. And you already know how I feel about the rookie quarterback that's presumably coming in. What I don't know right now at this point, and we had who was the guest we had on from Seattle that kind of really put some cold water on Shane Waldron? Rangenbruger. He was awesome. A little bit. We had and then we had another guy, the athletic writer. Um on Hogan Johns, the same thing. It, yep. it, it's it was kind of a different perspective leaving Seattle. We had the Jackson Smith and Jigba <laughs> interview at the, and, and then meanwhile we had Gerald Everett come in here last week and just rave about the guy. Yep, and, sure, and, yeah. and how awesome he is. So it, you know, the I think it's going to work out. I still think it's a good hire, but. Uh, in terms of the questions I have, that's the thing I don't know the most and, enough and about, a, about right now. And it's a great point. And it's not just about well, whether or not the scheme will work out. But they also have a, a bigger task, which is to develop the quarterback. Yep. And so, yeah, you know, that you're you're twofold here. And and they brought in a lot of different guys, right? Passing game coordinator. Thomas Brown. You know, exactly. Yeah. You got Kerry Joseph. You got Shane Waldron. You you got uh the, the quarterback they brought in. What? Ryan Griffin, right? Is yeah. that who they brought Brett, in? R- Brett Rippin. Brett, well, yeah, no, but Brett he's Rippin talking about the coach that they oh, have. Yeah, oh, they, yeah, Ryan Rippin. Who apparently isn't even joining the team until June, by the way. Right, because he's here for one reason, and that's to walk Caleb through things here when we get to camp. So, you know, that, that's good. You've you've brought it in, you know, a nice circle of coaches, and everybody's going to have their job to do their due diligence with this guy. But, yeah, from scheme to development, a lot of, a lot of questions still on the table if they're going to actually be able to pull this off. Um, but yeah, we always want to live on the side of optimism until we're given a reason not to as bears fans. Typically. Yeah. Good point. I I did not have teeing up the coaching issue as something on my docket today, but it is a, it is a fair thing to underline Adam Hogue. I'm still worried about the middle of that line. Let's, let's not, let's, let's not forget that the first time, the next time that Tevin Jenkins makes it through a season fully healthy will be the first time. Let's not forget that Nate Davis had a, a weird year and he, he had some games where he looked good and some where, looked, where it was the complete opposite. And then we're now have two centers that are brand new to the team. So all but, of that is, then, is, is interesting and confusing and concerning, but hopefully we'll be okay. Yeah. I mean, look, if the answer, if the question was specifically positional knee, I'm still, you know how I feel about center and you, and you know how I feel um, just how big of a need that they just need to really find that guy. And I'm skeptical that Ryan Bates is that, 
long-term guy. I hope he's an upgrade, though, at least in 2024. Um, the one thing I'll say about Nate Davis is it, it kind of gives me Robert Quinn vibes. His whole offseason, remember all the stuff lot, he was man. dealing with, yeah. the death in the family, never really felt comfortable getting in there. Robert Quinn, uh, while it wasn't ex the exact same reasons, had that same situation. It was a COVID year. Um, there, there's... <laughs> that was distracting. <laughs> that was that was Sean Anderson Sean, walking right in front of the camera. Sean, but Sean but Anderson, Anderson, everybody, uh, definitely yeah. jumping yeah. over Sean, the cords. There are Sean, many uh, and, Sean Anderson knew to the idea of sets, you know, <laughs> in studios. That was phenomenal. <laughs> well, that was like Garrett Crochet giving up a home run in the first. We literally put up a stanchion and a blocking yeah. thing here, you know, where you can't get through, but it's okay. You're not stopping Sean Anderson. You can only what? hope to contain him. And Sean Anderson will be on our CHGO sports podcast coming up where we're going to do a college basketball special here as soon as this show is over. So stay tuned and you'll hear me cry about Purdue. Yes, we will. <laughs> See, that is the, I do have to say, Greg, and this is on you, by the way. So my point of oh, that whole Nate God. Davis what thing, the I Nate do? Davis thing is that I think he'll be better in year two because I think he'll just be more comfortable. That's fair. You crying about your team would be a reason why everybody wants them to lose so we don't have to put up with it for a month. But when I'm it, just telling you, that's on you. Wouldn't excessive cry that's and be like, you. well, I hope they win so I don't have to hear him cry? No. No, like, I think I'd rather put up with it for one day that, after that's you how lose. Cody was one day during the season. Like, I just hope they win so I don't have to hear you this week. That was what he said but to me you, at one point. No, they so, win. Like, you I'm talk so about it more. Insufferable. Yeah, they're, they're still in. I'm so insufferable that you just, all right, just let's have this happen for him so I don't have to hear him. I'm not acknowledging that you're even no. in the tournament. That's all I'm going about. It. <laughs> the idea of Purdue, if Purdue wins at all, you're going to be as insufferable as ever. I really won't. I'll be so relieved. When the Cubs won it, I thought I'd be super insufferable. I wasn't. I was just relieved they didn't blow it. Um, you know, and I think that you look giving him a look. You giving him a look right now? I'm not going to be insufferable. I'm a, you're I'm a mature individual. Why does nah. nobody trust me? Do not shake your head, Milwaukee Brewer guy. <laughs> the I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a mature person. Well, you're the Packers guy. guy. You're oh, there he is. You're Where's the Packer guy? No, oh, look at it. Come on down, Green Bay. Grambling. <laughs> I don't think that <laughs> let's any, go Grambling. I don't think anybody who knows you would say that you're not naturally insufferable. <laughs> naturally insufferable. <laughs> uh, but, uh, uh, <laughs> it has I mean, nothing to do with the last two minutes, but I think I, I think Steven needs to take your headset to do super chats here. Oh, do you? Yeah, we got nine minutes. He needs a headset. He needs so someone. I'm just getting kicked off. That's, yes. what, that's what's yes, happening. Go here. root for your Boilermaker. Right, you'll, you'll, you'll be back on, on our college hoop special show coming right on up, and you can go make some friends Perhaps here. That'd people. be a good thing. First thought I put on Bragg's is headset. You have a massive head, man. That This thing was wow. like dang, wow. the side of an ego. That's what she said. Don't yell into my mouth. <laughs> Had to go there. The old weird, weird. That's and we were just questioning your maturity a second ago. <laughs> that's, that's, where we're at. that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> you guys ready for some yes, chat? Yes, please. Let's God. do it. Yeah. Twenty dollars from Old Man Gaming TV, nineteen seventy-five. Never bash Caleb. Never will. Would prefer six, seven top-level picks or players than one. Fields was loved and loved by his team. I prefer known leadership and picks to one lottery ticket, even if you know five of the six numbers already. That's a fair take, man. You, you Hopefully you'll be wrong. I think you'd even want to be wrong, but I understand that you're still hanging right in there with, with uh, I'll take one. The right one lottery ticket, though, can be the only one that you need, to be completely honest. Well, the, well, that's the thing. If Caleb is who they think he's going to be, you couldn't get him for what you could have gotten for the first, but you couldn't even come close that, to getting it. That's what I think people are missing. This is the lottery ticket. Exactly. They pulled off this amazing trade. And as you always point out, Carm, they got lucky that it's number one. They won the lottery. This is the lottery. You don't double down. You, if you win your lottery ticket, you win $200 million. You don't say, here, I'd like to double a double or nothing. You don't split gangs. You just, you know. That well, I Brandon did. Spano no, might I, at the one night one. in Vegas. Did he really? No. I, but the know. way that night was going, I could have seen it happening. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. He, was, he was on something. 
Uh, All right, uh, Patrick Simmons, $20. I can admit I was wrong about Fields, and I will support the next QB as much as Justin, but with so many sure things slash general, generational players in the past that have failed to live up to the billing, I'm nervous he's Bryce Young. No, Well, Bryce, look at the situation Bryce Young was put in with Carolina. He yeah. literally had nobody to throw to, no one to block for him, and that's just not the type of player that he is. Caleb is coming into a situation with the Bears where – Arguably, it's the best situation that any number one overall pick has ever been to. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't compare the two. Bigger than Bryce Young, uh, more talented than Bryce Young, going into a much better situation than Bryce Young. Also, more of a consensus number one than Bryce Young was. Yes, without a doubt. I never, and we talked about it all leading up to the draft budget. I never understood why he was the number one guy. Never made sense to me. And by the way, he'll probably still be better than he was last year. I in my so. opinion, I think it was just such a horrible situation. For him to go into, but I don't think the talent levels are close. Go Pat, ahead, Steven. Patrick, before, appreciate you. Before I read the next one, we have eleven hundred people watching. Yeah, can we hit the subscribe button here? Yeah, we got it. We got to get on that. Get guys. the thumbs up too as well. Let's Everyone go. Everyone listening here in the crowd as well. Chgo Sports on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button. Send. CHGO Sports on YouTube for those who are live. That's who we are. By the way, we have a super cut, I believe, on YouTube of every throw that Caleb Williams threw yesterday. So check out that in the channel as well at some point today. Um, don't do it right now. In fact, don't even do it when the show's over because we got our college basketball special coming up. But then do it. You can do it now. Just come back. <laughs> All right. Ten dollars from Russ C. Caleb Williams can be humbled coming to the NFL. That is okay. It is easy to forget these are 22 to 23 year olds. He will grow and mature the same way Justin Fields did over his years here with the Chicago media. Bear down. Yep. No doubt. I mean, you forget that he's only 22 in the way he's handling things. Completely agree with that. Great super chat there. All right, Carm, we got one for you here from Joseph Dragata, $2. My guy. Carm, do you play pickleball? I know you like tennis. Bear down. So, Joseph, uh, I have played pickleball. I do view that as the kitty game to the real game that is tennis and um i am annoyed that there's pickleball players all over the place that are taking my tennis courts but i am trying slowly to warm up to it and by the way congratulations uh to whoever beat me last time my first <laughs> loss of the spring season six one six three had my chances in the second step but just didn't have it so um you know it's a tough night we were talking about pickleball yeah. the other day would you play pickleball against me and nick and I don't sure can't probably I can't envision Bragg's being remotely good at that sport, but if bad he came out there too, bad athlete, awkward balance, <laughs> no, no, no hand eye coordination. This uh, isn't fair. He doesn't have a mic. Well, I, he doesn't need this, one. This he, is he the knows, one time he can take a shot. He, 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 he knows that I'm big of the truth. Have you seen the guy try to like even walk? It's 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 it's, 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 <laughs> oh, look, it's look awkward. Look at his phone right now. He's betting yeah. against we Northwestern. Get the on ring, find ball. out who's got eye hand coordination. What? Boxing ring I won't be going into because you are um, an animal, and uh, I don't fight animals. <laughs> All right, guys, keeping it moving here. Old Man Gaming TV 1975, another super chat, $2. More worried about Caleb being Todd Marinovich. No, 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 no. Okay. Don't go there. It. Don't go there. You know, I don't mind trolls that spend money on super chats so we can keep them coming but that's got to be what that he, is come on if you really believe that we're not paying attention no old man gaming he's not i don't think he's a he's a troll i think he's a solid old man or he's in, he's in here every every show appreciate you thank you he's what solid guy super old solid guy super okay. old i mean he listen old man's nervous people are scared that it's because it's the bears so it. so yeah. just old man he we're scared of success stop being scared of success caleb is stop being scared of greatness bears fans need to get over this and and caleb is i don't know him personally no one out here does but he seems very well adjusted compared to where todd marinovich was and his overbearing dad coming into the nfl all right we got to be out in three minutes all right two dollar super chat from epino films nick i wrote the hostile reenactment short last night all right Thank you, FNO. We can't you wait to see it. Oh, if, you, if you did not see that, make sure you go onto YouTube. We have Nick's hit clipped already. It's at the very end of that. Nick stayed in the hostel. I did. It was. Uh, yeah, like I still don't know if we should be bragging list. about that, but as a company, but. Uh, well, I was supposed to fly in the morning of. I was on me kind of switching it up, and I didn't. I didn't read the fine print, so it's on me. Yeah, but I think it's a great move. We're very thrifty and intelligent, so we can give you great value. I didn't mind it. Nick, hostile for life. All right, this one, $2 from Toxic King Christian. Happy March, boys. Purdue goes down tomorrow. Bregs, have anything to say? Nope, doesn't have a headset. 
Okay. <laughs> Clayton Stoker, $5. Any chance the Bears are behind <laughs> the no physical? <laughs> <laughs> Any chance the Bears are behind the no physical limited visits? Far-fetched, but y'all know how the loose is with injury reports. Uh, I, I'm not going to lie. I missed that. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a little confused by it. Meaning the, the reason for not taking a physical to combine and Oh. Limited visits with other teams that, is because the Bears are behind it because he has a draft promise is what I think he's going for here. Oh, uh, oh. I, 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 the Bears still need to get a physical. No, they're, they're they're I I wouldn't be su- su- surprised if there's some truth to the idea that they don't want it necessarily public when he's coming, um, and that might be part of it. But no, they 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 want to do their due diligence all the way to the end. All right, rapid fire on these last three. Uh, Clayton Stoker, $5. Time to stop trading back, in my opinion. You have a chance to add blue chips all to Dunes and neighbors, Marvin Harrison Jr., Turner. If four QBs go, you go run to the podium for who's left. Yeah, I like that. I yeah, like that. Same thinking. And again, you don't have to trade up for this guy. You just get him. And then mm-hmm. you get to make another pick eight picks later. Or trade back. All right, Justin Smith, $5. Why do some people in Bears media want to hold Caleb to the same standard as we did Justin in year three when Caleb will be a rookie? Because they have feelings about Justin, and you're, but it's a very good point. Gotta right, give well, him a little time. Last mm-hmm. one from our guy Matt Nuku, two dollars. Happy Thursday, Nuku. great show today, guys. Nuku, Bear Nuku. Matt Nuku, Nuku, appreciate it. Nuku. So good, Nuku. That was the last one. That was the last one. All right. Uh, well, hey, here's the good news. We are not really going anywhere. This is going to end the CHGO Bears podcast, but um, we have a what are we calling this again? What, what's our official it's the name? The CHGO for Sports Podcast, a college basketball special. Cody Del Mendo, Sean Anderson, our bets guys are going to be killing it, telling you what to put your money down today, tomorrow, the whole tournament. We're going to talk some Big Ten. You know, we got Northwestern, Wisconsin. I'm planning on making a cameo to underline why you should bet the Wildcats. Purdue. At the American Place Michigan Casino, State. this place is awesome. No, yeah. no Iowa though, and we're not going anywhere. So uh, we NIC. understand. We understand. We had an early show and uh, earlier than normal, but come out all day long. We're here. There's basketball on. We're at Circus Sports in Waukegan, American Place Casino. Great spot. Um, it's it's outstanding. It's awesome. Here. It's it really awesome. cool. You got the Circus Sports book, then you got the casino slots, tables. To our left is a breakfast bar with coffee. To our right is a Few full different. full bar. To uh, we got. We got it's a, it's a few it's, different it's, restaurants. It's a, we got to wrap up. We Tomor- got to wrap tomorrow's show. We have another special time. I know it's been a weird week. Bear with us. We'll be back to noon, our normal noon time on Monday. I promise. But tomorrow, for a number of different re- reasons, but most importantly, our guest that's joining us tomorrow. We are going to start at one thirty, and also we're not going to lie. It's partially because this guy wants to watch the Northwestern game. But one thirty, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, there's it literally out, nothing wrong with the schedule. That. There's nothing wrong with that. Also, I have an appointment at noon. I can't miss. I would have accommodated noon. Thank you very much. <laughs> but most sure. importantly, our guest at 1:30 is we're, Mina Kimes. We're doing it at Woo! one. We're doing it at 1:30 for Mina. That's yes. why we're doing it. Mina Kimes will be on the show tomorrow. We're going to talk to her. She has a lot of feelings about what the Bears have been doing this offseason. She's very, I think, excited about what the Bears are doing. So she's going to join us tomorrow. Hat tip to Braggs who uh, booked Mina, but is not even going to be on the show because he has more important um, things to do. I, I don't got know if better heard. things to do. No, I'm kidding. I wish I could talk to Mina, but I'm going to be um, basking in my uh, Purdue gloriness tomorrow and, and trying not to cry myself to sleep tonight. Okay. Uh, we'll look forward <laughs> to that happening. Uh, again, come out and join us at some point today. We'll be here, and uh, otherwise we'll talk to you tomorrow at 1.30 on the CSGO Bears podcast. Bye. We all silly like the mayor.